life, love, and lipstick. Hey, welcome to another episode of Life, Love, and Lipstick with Leslie Stewart and myself, Tracy Lynn. Well, hello, gorgeous. How are you? Hi, Tracy. I'm doing well. Thank you. We were we were talking off camera that we're we're dressed in our Easter colors because we're coming off our nice long Easter weekend. How was your weekend? Good. Good. It was good. You know what? I enjoyed the sun. It was nice to see the sun and some warmer temps. And yeah, we're we're in our nice bright or not bright but pastel-y colors to celebrate Easter and spring. How was your weekend? It was good. It was good. Thanks. I agree. I mean, I know we're obviously here in Ontario, we've uh, gone into another lockdown and we're saying, you know, that it's the second Easter where we're in lockdown. Of course, this time last year was a lot, you know, scarier, a lot of unknowns, no vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Uh, It felt just so dark and lonely last year. I think this year is a little different. It Um, is a little bit different, but did you say lineups out there at the stores? people were all over the place. I know. Well, because the restrictions are different again. And I think that's so hard for people. It's hard for us to follow this bouncing ball Mm -hmm. laid out by the provincial government, right. Without getting too political, but it is, I'm finding I'm frustrated with both Mm -hmm. the provincial and federal government and what's going on. Obviously we're in this situation because of the delay in vaccinations, right? Yeah. And now it's kind of our fault. Like they're kind of blaming us and like, we just want to live. <laughs> we do just want to live. And I know a lot of people, they just want to get their vaccinated, like get vaccinated yes. so that we can just move forward. Cause it's going to take a couple months, but then you have the ones where you can't even bring up the V word, the vaccine, right. because everyone has an opinion and I value everyone's opinion. Right. But I, like many people for myself, I, I can say I'm not as educated as I probably should be at this. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it was just a different kind of Easter, but it, hey, it was nice to have that extra day where we could sleep in. Mm-hmm. Yes. I agree. Just not have to worry about things. I agree. But- Cause you know, you and I both talked about how this, this lockdown, you know, that this past year has had a great toll on people's mm-hmm. emotional, mental health. Right. And it continues yeah. because I mean, we don't get a lot of sunshine this time of year and no. we need as much as we can to feel good and be healthy, but Um, yeah, it's, it's hard on people's, uh, wellness. Yes, it definitely is. And, uh, we're going to go to a quick break here. When we get back, we're going to talk about the G spot. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back to life, love in lipstick. Yes, we are back and we are talking about the G spot. Way to jump right in there, Tracy. (laughs) I know. I read this article and I thought, okay, this is perfect for our show because we are all about females and, you know, just our body and mental health and Mm -hmm. in the lies that are out there and the stuff that we've believed over the years. And this one in particular, it says the G spot doesn't exist. Once upon a time, there was a, there was a, they say the once upon a time in 1982, the G spot did exist, but over the years, it doesn't. Okay. I could see that happening. Like from like centuries, you know, how, uh, you know, they, some people believe we had tails and we don't anymore, but I mean, how do you lose it from eight, the eighties? <laughs> I don't know. We've lost a lot of things from the eighties that I, I don't know. I kind of wish we could get back shoulder pads and <laughs> big hair, big hair. <laughs> yeah, I know. But who would have thought the G spot would just often leave us. No. And the stats on this. So they're saying that the G spot really doesn't exist. And we've been groomed to think and be obsessed over the the fact that there is a spot to get you so satisfied Mm -hmm. um, that the percentage of women that are not having sex because they can't find it Mm -hmm. and how it's affected relationships because men can't find it. It's alarming. (laughs) Well, I don't think you need to find it to have pleasure. That's the point. You should maybe, maybe stop focusing on that now that you know, it doesn't exist apparently. Yeah. Well, they're saying 11% of women have avoided sex because they can't find their spot. 11%. Okay. I don't want to be all judgy, but that seems a little odd to me. There's lots of other spots. There's other areas around there that are perfectly good. (laughs) <laughs> yes, there's something going on down there when it's done right. Yeah, it's no matter <laughs> if it's self pleasure or yeah. if it is with a partner. Sure. But I thought 11% of women are avoiding this because of the disappointment of not having it. But maybe it's not having it. I don't know if it's not having it or maybe there really is a spot and just no one has found it. Well, but, but, you know, from a physiological standpoint, from like physical, you know, is a doctor saying that it just doesn't exist? Like it's not there. Well, there's, there's no evidence that says the G spot is a spot or a structure 
44% of women have felt frustration, confusion, or anxiety while trying to locate their G spot. So, like, but if you, but, but my, my med student down there or what? Well, this is the thing. So med students studying back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they saw one, there is one, and then now it's gone. <laughs> I, I guess that's the tricky part. It was easier. It was located easier back in the eighties. And then throughout, you know, the decades, it's harder to find. Okay. <laughs> this is going to leave a lot of people, you know, yeah. either Googling or really yeah. thinking through this. <laughs> yeah. This is a legit story that has come out and the, like, okay. Again, another one, 31% of women say their partner has gotten frustrated while searching for it. Oh, what like how frustrated, like they gave up and got dressed and <laughs> went for coffee. <laughs> when I read this stat, I think of somebody, you know, when they're, um, they're mining and they have the light on their forehead <laughs> and they have all their tools and they're chipping away. Like, you know, that's too much work. And that's kind of loses yeah. the whole point of what you're, you know, you're supposed to be. So maybe that's what the issue is. Maybe back, back in the day, people were more in the moment and they were able to, to get to that satisfaction. Whereas now we are so on demand. We just want to know where that spot is right now. I want to hit it because I'm multitasking and I got the laundry on and I have to do dishes and the kids are going to come home in about five minutes. And I'm texting my friend. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it could be. I mean, you're right. We are very, we don't give a lot of time to anything anymore. It's like, we need things in very short 60, you know, to 90 minute sound bites. So yeah, maybe they don't want to give much more time than a minute. (laughs) Yeah. I was just going to say, if you have longer than a minute to find that spot, then that's pretty good. But for the most part, (laughs) we just want to get there and attention span. Think about the attention span. Yes. Back in the day, we had a little bit more of an attention span compared to now. We absolutely do. Right. It's messed us up completely. Maybe the men had more, more of a clearer mind frame to go searching for it. Maybe we're, maybe we're under too much stress and anxiety and maybe it just, that's why it feels like it's just disappeared, but maybe it's just, yeah. Here's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. 82% of men believe every woman has a magic spot. Oh, they believe we have it, but they're just not sure if they can find it. They don't know where it is. They don't know where it is. Well, if we don't know where it is, then they definitely aren't going to find it. (laughs) Well, where did you leave your keys last? Right. Right? They don't know. How are we supposed to know? Like, we're not mining for gold down there. That is Um, an interesting one. We're going to have to see how that story develops and unfolds. And if we ever can get it back, I don't know. I feel like I think it's there. I mean, it has to, it has to be there. Science has said that there are spots down there, which which, we've all experienced different sensations and spots and what works for one may not work for another female. But, and I mean, good stats to know that 82% of men, they're willing to find it. Like they they know that there's a magic button there. (laughs) I don't know if they think this button's going to make dinner. Um, I do not I don't know, be quiet. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. comply completely I don't know but uh, that's a very good point it's really it's it, this one just has me stumped <laughs> I know I don't know I just I when I read that I could not believe it and then when it says that you know science is saying that it just does not exist right now mm-hmm. but back in the 80s it did that part I mean if they said you know what it never existed okay we just kind of made something up but um the fact that it was just around like you know, 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. Well, you know what, speaking about things that don't exist. Yeah. Um, obviously social connection these days mm-hmm. that, that just, um, the smile we can't see when we're, cause we have our masks on. Yeah. Right. And that whole, hi, how are you doing? And taking a moment to talk to people because a yes. lot of people are socially isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to tell you about this sweet lady that I met on Friday on good Friday. We mm-hmm. decided to go and hit a patio up one because it was a nice day. And two, yes. it was the last time we were the going <laughs> for a while. So we went up to a local pub mm-hmm. and we were sitting on, I mean, it was a bit chilly, but you know, you order your drink and we had fish and chips and this lady was sitting across from us and she was a lovely lady, just her personality. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're sitting at your table, you could take your mask off. 
Right. She was sitting there by herself. And we had said, you know, cause she was talking to us uh, from across the, the patio. Mm-hmm. And I said, without even thinking, I'm like, do you want to join us mm. Come over for a drink? Right. And then I realized, oh my gosh, am I allowed to do this? Because technically no, yeah, she's exactly a household, right? I know. And I didn't think about that. Of course not. Because naturally we would, we could do this stuff, but normally yes. and her face lit up. And Aww. she was like, oh, I would love to. And then I'm like, can we do this? And she's like, ah, you know what? I'm fine. You know, let's do this. But I mean, she sat yeah. far, far away mm-hmm. um, at the table and she wanted me to tell you to say hi, that she thinks that you're lovely. Aww. Uh, she was asking me what I did. And, you know, I explained yeah. to her, I'm like, oh, I'm like, do lots of stuff. And, you know, one yeah. thing in particular, I explained our show. Yeah. She says that she's met you before a lot. Yeah and knows of you. And she just wanted to say hi. And I had to say, she was such a lovely person. She had some great life advice. Go figure. Right. I mean, we were talking about how you, you, I, I really believe these moments are meant to happen. You know, that you were at that restaurant at the same time she was sitting outside the opportunity to talk. I mean, it's like, she was sent there to talk to you. That's how I felt. I'm like, wow, yeah. this, the universe is really working in mysterious ways because normally, I mean, I'm a, I would speak to anybody because I love the stories of people. I love to mm-hmm. hear what people have to say. Yeah. But she was just, you know, what she had to say in that moment, she's like, mm-hmm. you know what? Don't let anyone stop you from doing and what you're doing right now. Keep doing what you're doing. You're, oh. you're awesome. You're, you know, you're, you're a lovely person. And it was mm-hmm. one of those days where, you know, you start kind of second guessing stuff and sure. yeah. And she just says, keep doing what you're doing. Mm. And I'm like, wow, where did that come from? And you see some people would believe someone like that's an angel or a spirit or something, right. That's coming along to just bring a, deliver a message. Um, you know, just to, and you say, sometimes you just need that little someone to interject and remind you her personality was so contagious. It was so Aww. uplifting and so fun. I honestly was like, I want to have a drink with you again. Aww. And we had said, Oh, hopefully we see each other again at the same yeah. place. Yeah. Hopefully in four weeks, who knows? Well, And that's, so that, that brings us to the whole point of how right now, I mean, we're trying to adjust and hopefully just temporarily adjust, as you say, to smiling with your eyes. You hope people see that you're smiling because you're wearing a mask Mm -hmm. and that, that lack of physical and just communication and connection with people. It's, it's, it's wearing on us. Yeah. And you can tell if someone's smiling at you through the mask because your eyes don't lie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. I sometimes I think, am I smiling? And can they tell I'm smiling? I think the same thing. But I just can't help but not to smile at people. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I just, I I saw this uh, quick little, I think it was like a TikTok or something. And this guy was standing out on the street down in the US and he had a sign and he was just giving out hugs. He said, if you need a hug, come give me a hug. Now, I don't know if this was pre-pandemic or if he's in one of those states that things are wide open uh, because there are some, right? Look at Texas, their baseball game completely full. Yeah. Texas, Georgia, opening up everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So who knows, but people were literally walking up of all ages, you know, and, and sexual orientation, just walking up and just giving the guy a hug and, and they just needed one that day. I thought, wow, you know, some people, anybody don't get to touch. (laughs) You can't even look at somebody because if you sneeze or if you just clear your throat, people look at you with the death stare. Yeah. Have you had that where I know I've been in a situation where I think I was in the bank and I could feel like a tickle in my throat and I'm like, don't cough. You're going to get kicked out. People are going to stare at you. (laughs) Yes. And I just, um, and then you get into that whole thinking about putting the mask on. If you know, dating Mm -hmm. and seeing someone, Mm. what do they look like when they don't have their mask on? Well, yeah, we, we're going to have a guest on eventually to talk about the whole dating scene right now and what's happening with it and how people are managing, because that's a, it's a tough world to date and no matter what. Yeah. Like talk about life right now, really quickly. You want to talk about the dating scene and the horror stories we hear about that. Now we don't have a G spot (laughs) and then you put in this whole social distancing thing places are closed down. Like you're, right. you're just, it's doomsday. Basically. Right. I know. Apparently people are doing zoom dates. So they're kind of doing what we're doing right now. And they both order the same pizza and, you know, and sit and have like a date as if they're eating it together, or they watch a movie yeah. at the same time, or some, one of them when 
art galleries and stuff were open would go to the art gallery or you know however they would do it with that physically being together but that's um I mean maybe it's a nice way to date versus you know some people just uh jump right into things if you know what I mean on the yeah. first date and you shouldn't I, no. I mean I don't feel so maybe getting to know each other first and really knowing rare rare days right, right. without being physical you know, first one? Yeah, yeah, getting to know what their favorite color is before yeah. knowing their name. Exactly. And just right. knowing that your likes and, you know, or I'd heard that they, they said, you know, suggest um, you go to your favorite spot, wherever you are, and show me what it is. And so someone might go out into the middle of, you know, the lake in their canoe or go out in nature or oh. show up. You know what I mean? And surprise, so you kind of get to know the person. But I mean, oh, wow, I know. Who knows? It's been an informative first half, though, here on Lives and Lipstick. We have more. We have a lot more to talk about. Oh, yes. So uh, coming up after the break. Yes, we are done talking about that spot we can't find. We're going to talk about another G thing called gaslighting. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Life, Love, and Lipstick. It's Tracy Lynn and Leslie Stewart here wearing our nice spring colors. Mm -hmm. On this uh, beautiful day. Yep. It uh, is another week. It's April. It's so nice to say that it's April. Honestly, time is flying by so fast. Yes. This year has flown by. I agree with you, mm -hmm. yeah. which is good. I mean, we're, we, I don't like time to fly by, but I do like when we're trying to get out of um, lockdown and yeah. away from coronavirus. <laughs> Yes, it's, and that's all we hear all the time. So yeah. it's nice to, well, what we do, we talk about real life and stuff that's going on. And this one in particular, yeah. I am shocked at how many names there are out there for things that happen to us. Mm -hmm. Now, this one in particular, um, I know I can probably say, yep, more than once it's happened to me. Mm -hmm. Gaslighting. Right, right. So, so, what an emotional abuse that's going on. Yeah. So basically, it's a form of psychological abuse where a person or group makes someone question their sanity, perception of reality, or memories. So I, apparently, people who experience this, they can feel confused, anxious, and unable to trust themselves. So you start questioning your own behavior because it's almost like they're they make mind games. <laughs> like they're projecting not only their own insecurities on you, but like, like you said, just making you believe something that isn't true about yourself. And mm -hmm. not only does this happen in, in relationships such as um, love relationships, mm -hmm. also in the workplace. Sure. Friendships, everything. Yeah. Friendships, uh, family members. Yep. I'm reading this and like, yeah, you're right. They make you question your own reality. And, and this is something that's like, it's making headlines. There's, there's a lot of people that are saying, you know what, this is what's happened to me. I totally mm -hmm. understand. I can relate to this. And it's mm -hmm. just another toxic relationship. I think it's important for us to talk about these though, because if you, if you're in it, sometimes, you know, you cannot see it. And so a discussion like this, and the more we hear about it, the more of maybe someone can stand back or just one little trigger that said, you know what? That's, I think that's me, my relationship, right? That's helpful. It, well, it, the, here's the thing that somebody has the power mm -hmm. to change the way that you think about yourself. Yeah. We've talked about this with uh, narcissists when it comes to relationships. Yeah. Uh, being married to one, yeah. being involved with one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, I mean, in, in, in workplaces too. I mean, this just blows my mind. One that they actually have a name for this. Yes. I, I think that I know for myself personally, I would, I just assume that that was something that was, um, I mean, I've questioned myself multiple times over the years, mm -hmm. in different situations, right? Yep. But thinking back, it's like, wow, I can't believe somebody had that power to do that to me. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, I had a friend when I think about it now, and this is exactly what was happening to her in her workplace. She worked in a government job too. Mm -hmm. And she had another female in that office that was doing exactly this. And it was, I mean, to the point where she was even shredding her, um, like, I mean, there was a lot more going on there, but like shredding her, uh, statement for, you know, her, her monthly, or I guess her biweekly pay stub, you know, or yeah, like, and so there was a lot going on there. Um, but, but definitely this, this was, you know, and again, if people only think it's happening in a love relationship, oh, it can happen anywhere. And I think that when you've experienced on every aspect that it can affect, like you said, a love relationship, we're in a work, in a workplace, toxic work environment, 
maybe a jealous uh, coworker or mm-hmm. um, just being a strong woman and being a threat to other people. Yes. Right. And yes. that's not even your intention, but then when you're not uh, what they call like a cocky person, you're not full yes. of yourself. You're not full of ego, but you are confident in what you bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And then you have that person that's like, mm-hmm, no, yeah. you got it. Peel the layers here. That's not really you. And you're like, but it is. Um, So some of the common phrases that you might hear when it comes to gaslighter from a gaslighter, which it's, it's hitting a nerve. I'm going to be honest right now. Mm -hmm. Some of them include you're so sensitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's because you are insecure. (laughs) Oh, Yep. (laughs) Why do men use that, that phrase? You're just insecure. Mm. No, I'm not insecure. Actually. It's, it's a fact. Yeah. It's a fact. (laughs) I've got concrete evidence here. (laughs) Sure. That that's not an, yeah, exactly. That's not an insecurity. Mm. Um, And another common one, again, this is not just males that say all of this. We know that females can too. Mm -hmm. Um, We play both sides, meaning we, we understand that it happens in both male and female, two mm-hmm. females. Yes. Another one, stop acting crazy. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, that would be another common one for uh, most likely you would hear a, a guy say to a girl. But, you know, I gotta, I, I'm wondering, as we're talking about all these different dynamics and relationships, do you think guys gaslight each other? Or is it, would it be not as common for a guy to gaslight a guy? Because they don't, they, yeah. they play differently than us. Like when they're, it's involved in a female, a male and a female relationship, it can happen. But I, I, I don't think guys would necessarily do it to each other as much to me. I don't know. I mean, some of the stuff, I mean, I can see in, in, um, in, you know, guys saying that to maybe some buddies or something, if they're just not being truthful Mm -hmm. or they're just that sneaky guy, right. That always has all the friends, like their social circle so big Mm -hmm. because God forbid anybody know who they really are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think the next time someone ever says to me, stop acting crazy, I'm going to act crazy. So that <laughs> here are the two. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to bring out crazy Tracy just yeah. so they can compare the difference. Yeah. Do you want to see Tracy? Do you want to see crazy yeah. right now? That's right. <laughs> you want to see Tracy with an E? You're going to get her. No. <laughs> I'm only getting, I'm very, very sweet. Um, and another one that they could say, you are just paranoid. Mm. right how many times have we heard this and no matter uh, maybe in a work employment where you're like well I wonder you know what's going on Mm -hmm. am I going to get fired or something up and then you hear someone say you're just being paranoid no actually I'm not right you know we're always expecting the worst maybe when it comes into a relationship and they use either stop acting crazy you're insecure or you're just paranoid or here's the best one I was just joking oh yeah. <laughs> my mom hates that term. She hates when people say she said, because they're always, she always feels there's some, some level of truth to they're whatever really. comes out of someone's mouth, which is true. Like, don't say it then. <laughs> like, don't say it if you don't want me to stew on it. Okay. Yeah. And if it's not funny, then don't say it because apparently you, you know, the joking part, it's not definitely not a fun. It's not a joke. It's not funny. <laughs> Listen, I may not remember a whole lot of stuff, but and I may have to write down a list when I'm going to the grocery store, or text myself multiple times, mm. but there's those moments where I'll be like, you, so when someone will say something and then they go, I'm just joking. And all of a sudden you could be, you can go back to that moment. Yeah. And it's like, doo, 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 doo. wait, wait, I'm sorry. What, where were you at that time? I'm sorry. I, I thought you were, no, I was just joking. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, I mean, these are all, yeah, they're all really good points for people to consider, you know, in, and, and I mean, it's, to me, it's kind of ties back to that. It's like a control thing, yes. right? I mean, as you mentioned, narcissism and it, it's, it seems like it's part and parcel of that. And also this other one that you were mentioning, the whole love bombing too. Oh yeah. Love bombing. And like the words that people are coming up with lately, I, I am just and baffled about a lot of this stuff because oh. gaslighting. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. And now we have love bombing, which not is not necessarily a negative thing. No. Cause you know, like, I mean, people are, you know, apparently down in the U S I don't know about here, but they've canceled Pepe Le Pew. Do you remember Pepe Le Pew? Yes. 
the yeah. little cartoon. He was the, the skunk that was in love with her and he just couldn't get enough of her. And mm -hmm. she was always trying to get away. And apparently that's, you know, you're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, do anything, but see all the good stuff left in the eighties. Exactly. Right. But he was a love bomber, right? He just loved to on her and he just, you know, wanted to just, but it, it can go negatively. It can turn. Well, see, that's the thing. They're also saying that love bombing is a manipulative tactic, a, man, a manipulative tactic, sorry, I uh -huh. can't even speak right now, used by a narcissist and abusive individual. So here we go. Yeah. Like what the heck? And, and I, I don't know. I, I know a few women that have been this way where they come on really thick. Mm -hmm. And I've mm -hmm. seen this happen. Maybe we've seen it in movies and stuff, but we, there was never really like a name for it. Yeah. But they really lay it on thick, buying mm -hmm. gifts, how much they love them. So instantly, like almost like a stage five clinger. Yes. Full right? on. Yes. Yeah. And then like, they're already talking marriage. Wait, I'm in love. This is the, the strongest love I've ever felt. And I'm going to marry this guy. And it's only like two weeks in. <laughs> yeah. You're lucky. It's like sometimes it's like the first day when you meet them and you hear people say that exact same thing. Oh, we're going to get married. This is our song. I've got, you know, everything's, <laughs> and we're going to have like five babies and we're going to have a dog. Yeah. And they just like, they idolize that image yes. so instantly. Mm -hmm. um, but this it's kind of scary. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I'm reading up all this stuff and um, I just yeah. didn't know all this stuff had names for it, but they're mm -hmm. calling this a dangerous form of emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A negative thing. It could just be somebody who just, you know, they're just a lover. Like mm -hmm. um, I'm trying mm -hmm. to, I'm trying to describe this. Like they're just, they're not being um like coming on a, a strong like oh i love you i love you mm -hmm. they just love a lot not and i don't mean to love a lot of people but they yeah. just love everything yeah. and some people love being in love so they want to push yeah. it right they want that feeling and and we, we you know i was mentioning um again off camera about the the five love you know people have their, their, their latest five different ways that you can love and some people show it you know by doing things for somebody and uh, some people show it physically. Some mm -hmm. people show it by buying things, right? Yeah. Like they just want to buy, buy, buy. And maybe that's just their way, but maybe some people would look back, you know, a girlfriend's like, okay, he's just literally already bought you a necklace and, you know, a car, <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. a little over the top, but maybe that's his way. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that, that come across like that too, because they have this need to constantly take care yeah. of other people. And I'm not saying that I, um, you know, I want to replace someone's mom, meaning I'm not a guy's mom. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the dude's mom. I'm not going to take care of every aspect, you know, because you're trying to fill a need mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. or, or a void that's going on. I think it's very common. Really? Yeah. I think it's common for, for guys to seek out somebody <clears throat> somewhat similar to their moms, you know, maybe in a providing, like as a provider kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, there's, but then there's also the men that just want to be taken care of. Like, oh yeah. Like a child. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, there's yeah. one thing for, for a man who wants someone to be like his mom. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's great which is really nice. And it's yes. sweet because, you know, you look at the person's mom and you're like, wow, they're really kind. They're nice. They're beautiful. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll do this, but I'm not going to be a mom yes. to a full grown man. Right. Because ideally I think, you know, I've heard this before and I think it's true that you want to find a man who has a good relationship with their mother. Yeah. I think, and I, I, from my experience, I see that like a solid relationship where they really almost consider their mom, their best friend in a way. And they just adore her and, and res because it's that respect to a woman, I think yeah. helps. Right. Yes. So that, as you say, that part's all great and good and wonderful, but it's just the reliance of, you know, I want you yeah, to do all the things my mom did for me growing up. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm not my taxes. I'm not here to change a grown man's diaper. That's for sure. Yes. Just putting that one out there. Um, right. But, right. Well, he shouldn't this, do either. Cause you want, you know, your man to be somewhat masculine. If you, if you like that, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope. Um, <laughs> but that's a whole other show when we talk about, um, yes. people have issues with, with that. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so yeah, going back to this love bombing thing, yep. they're just, um, they use it as a, they, they seek out their targets. That's the scary oh. part. 
right? And when yeah. you, if you, if you have been bombed this way, um, mm-hmm. you're like, start thinking, well, what, why was I this target? Was I put it, did I put it out there that I was just an easy target or do I need to be loved that hard or that bad that I was accepting all this? No kidding. That's interesting. And I mean, people can be very easily, some people can be very easily manipulated, right. And manipulated. And it's just, it's, some people are just easygoing and chill and allow somebody in be quicker and you know, and, and don't, maybe don't see it coming and then being controlled because they buy you all these gifts. They, they yeah. give you this, whatever thing that you were looking for, maybe it was the excessive love, you, mm-hmm. you know, you're craved to be loved mm-hmm. and everybody wants to be loved. Um, but yeah, there's that control that comes along with it. So mm-hmm. do you mm-hmm. accept these gifts? Do you accept all of this? And in return, <clears throat> you're like, okay, well, I'm, I've got to be controlled because this is what it's like. Well, and you can see how you, you know, you kind of sort of weave this web, right? You can see how you can get really stuck in it. And, and if you're being manipulated, it's really hard to see it again. And and then you might have, you know, when you're in love. um, So if we're looking at particularly a love relationship here, all your friends, your family can say all kinds of things to you. You don't see it. You're like, whatever. Yeah. I wish you, and then later your glasses hold me, right? You're exactly, you're wearing your rose colored glasses. Yeah. And nobody, you know, you just, we see things differently when we are in love and, uh, and that's not a bad thing, but, uh, yeah. So gaslighting, <clears throat> love bombing. Wonder if you have a gaslighting love bomber. If you have both, oh, um, that's big trouble. <laughs> or, you know, you have, you know, for, for someone who may have this in their personal life and then in their work life, mm-hmm. you, you can't win. Well, maybe we have people listening that are identifying themselves as having this or being like this to somebody else. Yeah. Right. Cause sometimes it's hard to it. see that you're doing it, but maybe you, yeah. I mean, I don't think you could see that you're doing it. You no. Know, and I just said, right. how somebody could actually look at you and find like that, that deep seated insecurity within and use mm. that against you. Yeah. Woo! I know. I don't know. But you know what? there are some people that are very good at that, at reading a person quickly. And I mean, that's why people get sucked into these relationships sometimes because the other person is just more domineering. It's smart, right? Yeah. yeah. And then again, we second guess ourselves. But the one thing we're not going to second guess is how great our podcast and our show is. So uh, we're going to go through the, to a quick break and we will be right back. Welcome back to Life, Love, and Lipstick. It is a jam-packed show. Yes, we are talking about everything, kind of finding things, stuff that don't exist, and, <laughs> and then the, the real stuff that do exist. Now, this one in particular, Zoom dysmorphia, how mm-hmm. conference calls have affected our self-image. Wow. I mean, I know I can relate to this um, because what I see and what other people see are two different things, mm-hmm. right? And yes. my, my worst a critic. And I think, Always. Oh, I can't, I have a hard time watching myself. I have a hard time listening to myself. I don't, I don't watch or listen either. I know. I just, I don't know. There's just, cause I, I I'll be so fixated on, Oh my gosh, I'm getting jowls now. Like, look how old I'm looking like mm-hmm. a second neck and look at these lines. Right. I mean, I think, you know, in, in our industry, obviously, I obviously sometimes we need to listen when I was doing weather years ago, I remember listening to myself weather and traffic because I needed to hear if I was being repetitive with a certain phrasing or something, yeah. because you only have so many things to talk about. All right. When you're doing weather and traffic, it's like, you're pretty, you know, it's raining, it's sunny. It's, you know, and the roads and the, it means, chill. right. But I just couldn't, I didn't like looking at myself either on camera. And as you say, people look at you differently. I mean, Cause yeah. you're, I mean, you are like drop dead beautiful. And you, you say you normally wear black today. You wore a lighter and you look, I think you look, yeah, all glowy and stunning and angelic. I wanted to look like you because you look so pretty and all your beautiful pinks and colors that you wear. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you, cause you always look fantastic. And I'm like, I'm going to bring in my, my Leslie look. I'm going to wear a nice <laughs> pretty pink color. And, nice. but it's just, it's out of my, my security, yeah. right? But but I did it, which is a good thing. But this in particular, this also goes along with Snapchat dysmorphia. Oh, oh. So many people in the last couple of years 
put filters on. Okay. Listen, I'm all for tweaking. If tweaking makes you feel better, you do what you need to do to make yourself feel better. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't judge. I don't say anything like that, but when you have to add like three or four different filters onto your picture Mm -hmm. and it doesn't even look like you in person, yeah, there's an issue. Well, you know, it's like what we used to talk about the Oprah filter, right? Oprah always had this Oprah lighting filter, her Oprah, like, yeah, on, on, she just looked, you know, everything. It's just perfect. But the only thing with that is, as you say, you know what you look like in real life. And then it starts to become this, you get more insecure, right? And then you're looking at other people. I've heard that people are looking at other people in the boxes on Zoom, yes. you know, or they're obsessed with themselves and not really listening because they're staring at themselves the whole time. They're like, they're looking over here and, but I can see that because when we see ourselves with the lighting or a filter of this, yeah. And then you look at yourself in the mirror when you take everything off or you're trying to, I mean, I've tried to do that contouring thing, you know, when you put the dark lines and then you have to blend it. I look like an army person because (laughs) one, I'm not great at blending and I don't even know how to contour. I highlight the wrong things. No, we need makeup artists in our closet for that stuff because I don't mess with the contouring either. They just know what to do because it looks weird when you're doing it yourself. (laughs) Like I said, it's like paint by numbers on my face. It is. You got to do my cheekbones, got to thin my nose. But this, um, especially like we said with Snapchat, think about Snapchat. How many pictures are our mm-hmm. children's children going to look mm-hmm. back at us as grandparents and say, oh, look, grandma was a, was a cat. Yeah, <laughs> she was, right? Well, did you hear about that story? I think it was about a month or so ago where I believe there was a doctor. I think there was a series of doctors or some, they're professionals online yeah. on a Zoom call. And I guess this, their, their child had set up the, like the- uh, Yes, he was a lawyer. The a cat. lawyer. Yeah. And he was a cat and he couldn't get it off his face. So he was a cat the whole time. And he's trying to be serious, right. With the judge. And, you know, the judge is being patient with him and so like, let's, let's go. But the judge is like, you're not, you don't look like you're ready to go. This is not, yeah. this is not, you can't be a cat. <laughs> his, like, tone. <laughs> and his tone was great because I watched and I'm like, well, I want to be a cat too. No, I actually really, really enjoy it. We should do a show like that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> we should. But this dysmorphia, body dysmorphia, Mm -hmm. it's causing Mm -hmm. a lot of people to, and this is both men and females. Okay. Cause men, they may not admit it, but they do add filters. Sure. Um, we, we, I mean, I, I have a ring on, which is why my face is always glowing all the time because I have the window open and there's all different lights. I can't get it consistent. Exactly. Right. Um, But I'm again, I don't want to scare anybody because I know what's underneath here, but Mm -hmm. they're causing men and women to get drastic, uh, procedures done to their face. And I'm not talking about like a little bit of tweak of Botox or, you know, you know, if you want to fill your lips up or whichever, but Um, surgical procedures, this is like huge stuff. And people are actually taking pictures of themselves Uh with the filters on and saying, make me look like that in real life. Oh my God goodness like yeah. eye lifts like lifting the, the eyelids and stuff like that because yeah. you know what I think Tracy so again in our industry we're used to seeing ourselves so we kind of know what we look like right yeah. um but people aren't used to seeing themselves on camera and yeah. so now this is a whole new world where they're staring at themselves for perhaps an hour or more on camera and they're starting to look at things and going oh my gosh I'm yeah. definitely looking in the mirror no the <laughs> best is when you see someone in person and they're like Oh, this is what you look like in real life. You're like, wow, you had had really softened up those lines with your filters. (laughs) Wow, you look uh, taller on TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is what I look like because I, I mean, I have been known, I will go to the grocery store with no makeup on. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when you wear it all the time, Mm -hmm. then you just don't want to wear it when Mm -hmm. you don't have to. Yeah. You know what I do? Uh, my mom raised me to always put on a little something. She should always yeah. put on a little mascara or something. So I always will. I'll always have like, I had, I had the little eyelash extensions for a while. Right. So those yeah. were glorious, terrible upkeep, but they were glorious. Yeah. Um, you know, because you woke up and you're feeling a little fresh faced. <laughs> and the same thing with my, with growing up with my mom too, you mm-hmm. always had to look your best. Cause you yes. just never knew. That's right. You never knew it was, no one's was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, I, I don't know. I just got to a point where I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, I do the mascara yeah. and some lip gloss, but now we have a mask, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. 
but yeah, there are days where I'm like, I just don't want to do anything with my face. Mm-hmm. Like, I just you should be allowed to. I mean, it's okay. Don't... Yeah. I'm like, my face needs to breathe. Yes. It needs to breathe. I mean, especially if sometimes the makeup we're putting on because we have to, um, I agree with you. It's, it is actually, I feel like my skin looks so much better without anything on it. I look at it. I'm like, Oh, I look kind of dewy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, why did I look like that yesterday? But then we start yeah. layering the stuff on and stuff like gets caught in like creases and stuff. Yes. Yes. You know, like it just, if you don't have the right stuff, it will make your face look yeah. older. Yes. And the contouring can make your face look older. But people yes. are going like full face, full on, like bold everything. Like like full face lifts, um, nose jobs, everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, I get it. Like, you know, we've talked about things that have changed yes. over yes. the years. I can admit yeah. that. I yeah. mean, I feel like I'm getting those gel things happening. And like mm. I constantly like pull my face back going, it remember happened. when? No, you're like, or you see a picture of yourself. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't really have that. (laughs) Well, I wish, I I wish that I didn't, I wasn't so hard on myself when I was younger. I know. Compared to now. Well, you know, again, without any judgment at all, but I do know, and I'm sure you know as well, there are a lot of, you know, young girls in their twenties, early thirties that have been doing, you know, Botox and fillers and that for a long time. And I understand there is a level of preventative as well in there that they say. Um, but, but I'm thinking, I didn't really feel like I had anything to fix back then, but if you're doing it then, or, you know, your lips or whatever, what happens when you're in your forties and fifties? Did you see the picture of that model? I think she was a model or she was like a a influencer, whatever. Uh So she was getting Botox for three years. Mm -hmm. And she woke up after having a, some Botox on her eyes. She always had it near her eyes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she ended up waking up one day and it was, it failed. It like malfunctioned and yeah. her one eye like is drooped right down now. I've heard about that, but it didn't go back. I think it's slightly going back to where it was, but like her one eye was like drooped down. And the other one looked very surprised, like very open. Like I'm mm-hmm. talking like. This is pretty much what it looked like. I know that people on the radio can't see what we're doing, but um, <laughs> but like literally like her face, it, it was just, I've yeah. heard that that can happen. I have heard that if How it, you know, scary is that? Yeah. Because you've got, you've got muscles around your eyes and right. And I guess they can trigger things and, and it, things can, can go a little, yeah. Imagine having a droopy eye because, because of that. Yes. I mean, oh. things that are droopy as it is, I don't need to add an eye onto that. Oh, oh. yeah. And, you know, you just don't know with these procedures, especially if you're talking about the big, the big procedures, the surgical ones. I mean, you really are putting yourself at risk as we know, anytime you go under the knife, you are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, I know people do it and they want to do it and that is okay. But it's, um, it's scary because you don't, you're really putting all the trust in this doctor that he's going to achieve what you wanted. I know, but how can they make us look like we do on the filters? Like that's a lot of work. Have you ever done a filter and then I I'll move? Oh yeah. The eye's still over on the one side. Oh, I haven't done that. No, that's funny. I should try that. (laughs) You move too fast on some of those filters. Yeah. Like I, I'm all, like I said, I am all for a filter. I'm all for whatever tweaking I need to do, working on things, adding things, because, you know, we're all looking for that fountain of youth and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always want to just look, feel good, but Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to add like 10 different filters and, you know, whiten my teeth here, make my eyes bigger there. No, as you, you and I both have, as you say, the ring lights, that's it because we need some kind of consistent lighting, but it's hard, but yeah, I mean, it's a shame that we have to feel that way. You know, like if you think about the big picture of all of what we're talking about here, it's, it's sad that, you know, but you know, it's, it's like the young girls looking at all these supermodels in magazines. I mean, all of those people are touched up to the nines. I mean, some days now out of like Japan and that, I mean, they're Mm -hmm. not even real people. They're yeah. actually just create a created image. It's just CGI. It's, it's pretty bad when you have men, they're marrying robots. So oh, that doesn't help either. Oh, that's a story for another day. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Uh, well, it was an informative show today. I mean, we still haven't found that G spot, but uh, Hey, if it was there in the eighties, it will like, like everything else, when it comes to fashion and things in, yeah. in the past, yeah. it always comes back. Yeah. They all comes back around. So maybe it'll just return. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna Maybe. wake up one day yeah. and poof there it is just I, 
We're going to have a lot of people thinking about that one today. Well, uh, anyways, interesting stats, but um, you're right. I mean, you could just see how it's affected so many people because they've been so obsessed over it that mm-hmm. it's affected relationships and in what 11% of women just have given up. Mm-hmm. Like, Screw it. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I would yeah. rather just read my book and go to bed. Or just, you know, focus on other areas that, you know, that there, there is more than just this G spot that gives you pleasure. <laughs> And we definitely will have someone on the show soon to talk about that because yeah. Yeah. If you can't be happy. Mm-hmm. No one else around you can be either. Um, so yes. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Well, I hope you have a great week. Thank you. You too. And it was fun. That's it for us. I can't wait to hook up with you again and see what else we're going to talk about. Oh, we always have so many great things. And thanks to everybody listening and watching. Um, again, if you ever have any show ideas, let us know. We've got lots, but or guest ideas. We always love to hear from you. Yeah. And don't forget to check us out on social media and all podcast platforms. If you missed a show, you can just catch it on there. We'll see you guys next time.